Hey, good evening. Today's Bible study comes from Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 9, as we continue to break down the word from the book of Matthew, and it reads as follows. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship may they worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Ooh. Amen. Let's get down to it. The first verse in chapter 15, then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to see Jesus from Jerusalem and asked. Remember that in this verse 1 it says, teachers of the law, but be ever present of who they were speaking to because they were on their high and mighty horses. You know they were. They know everything. And they were going to speak to the high and mighty one. And also the word tells us of who gives us true instruction. Matthew 23, 10 says, Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. So how does a student instruct the true teacher? They were already in the mindset that they had more wisdom than Jesus. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. The funny thing here is that they ask a question about a man, about man's traditions. Elders, first mistake. Mark 7, 8 says, You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. We do that to this day. Look at your holidays. Look at the things we celebrate. Look at the things that we give praise to. They're man-made things. They're not of the Lord. In short, you don't follow God's command. And this can also be a statement in response to verse 3. Second mistake is that man is at man's wisdom slash philosophy failure. If you look at Colossians 2 and 8, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. So you so-called intelligent men of the law are not understanding of who gave you the law, nor of the ways of the prophets who wrote about the one that is to come. And he is in front of you now, and you know, you don't recognize. Third mistake, which was more lack of knowledge, is you look at Mark 7, 18 through 20, it says, Are you so dull, he asked? Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of the body. And saying this, Jesus declared, all foods clean. Fourth mistake, you look at John 2 and 6. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from... 20 to 30 gallons. Do you notice in this verse that it speaks to man's ceremony? And that one was just food for thought. Uh, Jesus replied in verse 3, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Tradition. Jesus re replies with a rhetorical question and also one that pushed the true responsibility back in their face. Jesus does it with the teaching manner, but lets them know that, hey, you break the command of God, and what is higher, a higher command, man or God? Their tradition was getting around the law of God. They did things that they said, we won't do the things that pertain to God, but we'll do the things that pertain to benefiting us. They didn't want to do everything. Mark 7 and 8 says, you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. 
Lord knows we do that today. For God said, honor your father and mother in verse 4, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. First remember that this is the fifth commandment, and we will address this, but here are some things to think about. This is how the law worked. It condemned. It was not faith and mercy. I know that we only think of the commandments, the ten of them, but there were 613 laws. There were 248 that were positive and 365 that were negative. And if you look at Galatians 4 and 21, it says, Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? So if you think you know the law, you better read those other 603, because I think you probably know the 10. Get the other 603. Galatians 3, 10 and 14, though, says, for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, as it is written. Curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by faith them not faith but by them Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who is hung from a pole hung on a pole he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith by faith by faith we might receive the promise of the spirit and then we got to go back to Galatians chapter 4, 4 through 5. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. This is the gap period where there was a 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Lord was waiting for the proper time. And this is telling you right here when the proper time was. So they still didn't have a clue of who Jesus was. But he came to redeem those under the law. He was. It says, but when the set time had fully come, when the set time, when it was time, God sent his son, who was born of a woman, Mary, born under the law, because he was, to redeem those under the law, which was us, the sinners, that we might receive adoption to sonship that we might become brothers and sisters, daughter, sons to the Lord through him, not through the law, by faith, not law. But you say in verse 5 that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. If you look at the Ten Commandments, and we're just going to do the Ten, which we talk of all the time, if you look at them, the First Commandment to God, the Second Commandment to God, the Third Commandment to God, the Fourth Commandment to God, God wasn't even greedy with the commandments, because five through six, five through ten, is to you honoring yourself, helping yourself. Honor your father and mother, that's man. You shall not murder. That's man. You shall not commit adultery. That's man. You shall not steal. That's man. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. That's man. You shall not covet. That is man, all of them, doing to man. That's man doing to man. The Lord is even telling you, don't do it to man. Don't follow the ways of man. Don't do these things. And then he, if you look at what God says to him, you shall have no other gods before me. That's to God. You shall make no idols. That's to God. You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And we shouldn't and we can't. And why do we? That's to God. And then he tells you, remember this. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember it always. That's to God. Out of the ten, he took four. Just four. Just four. 
So they were only looking at the commandments that benefited man and going around God's commandments. And and you, I told you there's 613. So they were looking for the best for them, but not that uh, related to God. So they were doing the parts that were good for them, that made them feel good or, or that benefited them and let them get away with stuff. But the, the true ones that went to the Lord, they didn't want to do those ones. You know, we do that sometimes. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. Jesus calls them exactly what they were because they were doing what pleased and benefited them and not following even the law correctly. They were not protecting the law, but they were protecting their traditions as we even do to this day, as I've been stating. They, hey, they were in it for them as always. Verse 8 and 9, these people honor me with their lips but with their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus is speaking to them from Isaiah, which is someone they knew. Jesus has a way of putting things to us so that we can understand them. And this prophet has spoken about the people saying one thing and doing another. And worship is not worthy for the Lord to even look upon because they are teaching man's rules that we created and not God's rules. I think a verse, I think of a verse of worship the creator and not to create it. You remember where it tells you worship the creator, not to create it. Or you could say, who do you pray to yourself or God? Because man can't answer prayers. So I don't know why you follow man's ways. Man's ways are a destructive way. They have always been destructive and they will lead you into a destructive pathway. The Lord tells us to plant the seed. He didn't tell us to cultivate the seed because that's his job. He's going to fill it up. Man, we going to have faults and blemishes and we going to mess up, but the Lord is not going to. The Lord answers prayers. Man cannot answer a single prayer. Man cannot save a soul. Man did not die on a cross for you. Man is a being that is to be a servant unto God. And we are flawed. So these people were doing what we do in modern times. We say that we are Christian as a noun, but the Christian that is a verb, we don't act like. See, the Christian that's a noun is nice. Your friends like it. They see you. You wave hallelujah. The Lord been good to me. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for blessing my household. But you're hating everybody. And we do that. You're mad at somebody because they didn't do it your way. We do that. You don't like this person because your mama and daddy didn't like that person. We do that. Oh, they got a better house than I do. Oh, I can't stand them. Oh, they got a new car and they can't even afford it. Why they get that? Uh, we do it. We need to be the Christian that is the verb that acts because we are to act. Act. We do things. We move the word. We love on people. We are compassionate. We are kind. We are selfless. Those are actions. Or, in other words, in short, we talk the talk, but we don't walk the walk. We need to walk the walk. If you look at 1 Samuel 16 and 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things people look at. You know how we look at your skin color. Uh, whoo, uh, where you come from. Your bank account. What kind of car are you driving? Your type of hair? You know those things that we look at? God don't look at those because they aren't important. See, this this outer shell, this, this black skin I got, these gray whiskers I got, God don't look at them. God is checking the inside out. You, you got the pleasure of being colored whatever the Lord decided you were going to be. Why man can't get along with that, I don't know. but. It, That'll be something you'll have to take up with the Lord. We should stop hating one another. Galatians 3.28, read it. The Lord does not look at things like people do. People look at the outward appearance. The Lord is so inside you, knowing you better than you know yourself. So, when you look at these Pharisees, when they come up to the Lord and they are talking to him, 
All they had was lip service. They didn't have the heart to do as the Lord had commanded them, as he commanded us. Amen.